Hi, this is uh, uh, Jay Harwitz with the latest edition of the Amazing Mets Alumni Podcast. And we have two special guests, uh, Roger McDowell and Jesse Orozco. Guys, 1986, win 108 games. A lot of tough wins and tough losses, but what do you guys remember about July 22nd, 1986 in Cincinnati? I'll go with you first, Roger. You're asking me something on July 22nd, 1986, so that was, what, 35 years ago? Well, I'll, I'll give you a clue. We're, we're playing the Reds, we're 3-1 to in the ninth inning. Keith Hernandez is up. It's a fly ball in the right field. Dave Parker drops it. We tie the score 3-3. Three, three. And then you and Jesse did something probably something about them for a while. You walked today in pitching the last uh, three or four innings. What do you guys remember about that game? Well, that, I remember the fight. I remember uh, because the, the dugouts in Cincinnati are so close to the field, and it's basically a one step up on, and you're on the field. Um, and so, we, you know, I think it was we were in the bullpen in, in Cincinnati those days. You were on the bench, and if you had to go warm up, you ran down to the, the bullpen area. So we were all on the bench, and I think we were at that end where the third base um, fight happened between Eric Davis and, uh, and, and Ray Knight. And so I, I'm not sure how many fights we had that year. That year. A lot. We had, we had quite a few. So they all kind of run, not they run together, but I don't know how many we had, but it was just kind of like a, a daily thing for us. But in the last couple of innings, you guys, you know, you know, I guess we lost uh, Mitchell. Kevin Mitchell was ejected, and so was Ray. And Gary Carter had to go to third base. And yeah. and you guys alternated. You pitched and went to the outfield, and that really doesn't that doesn't happen too often these days. Well, the, the thing about it is, is that Jesse's really a, re- a really good athlete, and Jesse and I would have competitions in the outfield during batting practice. And he would pick a field and, not, you know, center field, not pick right field or, or vice versa or whatever it was. And, and we would shag the entire batting practice. And so, you know, from a, a conditioning standpoint, that's where we got our conditioning. And, and plus it was a lot of fun. So um, I guess at that point, um, you know, Davey and Mel Stoudemire and Bud Harrelson and Bill Robinson and Vern Hochschreit and all those guys got together and said, listen, you know, we, ha- we don't have enough players, but we got two pretty good athletes. That can they can put it in the outfield and that can also pitch and alternate. So that's what we did. I mean, I went I went from uh, a pitcher to right field to left field to pitcher to left field uh, back, and Jesse did the same thing. You know, and, and I remember obviously the the line drive that Tony uh, Perez hit to Jesse in, in right field that he got the put out in the outfield, and uh, I remember the uh, the player that hit the ball to me in left field for a fly ball that I. And we would both gotten put outs in the outfield with Max Venable. Yeah. Uh, the, but the problem was is that as I was camped under the out the, the ball, it was it was more left field than center field, but it was toward Lenny in center. And so Lenny came over and as the ball's getting ready to drop in my glove, he steps in front of me, actually stepped on my foot and caught the ball. And I said, Dude, what are you doing? He goes, Just wanted to be sure. So Jesse, uh, what are you doing? <laughs> It, it was it was it was a lot it was a lot of fun, um, you know. It was it was just another part of the game that we did, and we, you know, like I said, Jesse was a really good athlete, and and I was a pretty good athlete, and so the fact is that we had the ability to play other positions. What what do you remember about it, Jesse? Well, a lot of excitement, but like uh, Roger had said, you know, with the uh, the ball being dropped and, and continuing the game. We didn't know the situation was going to be like this, that Roger and I were going to be out. But I tell you, I know Roger had fun. I know I had fun, something we've never done before. So that was, uh, that was a great thrill about that. Uh, the brawl was uh, pretty amazing. I know I ran over there uh, when, as soon as the punches, I turn around, I see uh, Cal, uh, Cal Daniels and uh, another guy coming straight at me. And I said, I grabbed them both by the head, and I said, we just go down to the bottom of I do. We, that's why Mike Tyson, Mike Tyson right. loved to see and visit us that year because he liked the way we fought. I mean, he, he remember the play that Eric Davis led it to Ray and he got up and Ray just clocked him. Yeah. Right? Yeah, the thing is, is, is a lot of people didn't know, and actually I didn't know at the time, Ray was Gold Gulf's 
junior junior gold glove boxing champion for the state of Georgia. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I didn't know that at the time, but I sure found out real quickly that he's got a real quick right hand. Um, and so, like I said, we were at the end of the bench, and we ran out there, and like Jesse said, you know, you get to the bottom of a pile, and I, I felt, the, you know, there was a, an arm around my neck, and then I feel somebody pulling me out by my feet, and it's Bill Gullickson. Um, and so he, he pulls me out by my feet and I'm sliding uh, along the acid turf on my back and I look up and it's Bill Gullickson pulling me out and I go, hi Bill. And he goes, what are you doing in there? I was, I was a, a skinny little, you know, guy. I shouldn't have probably been at the bottom of the pile. Jesse, did Davey tell you what he was doing in the dugout? How did you set the plan for what was going to happen? You know, he was, he was back, lefty, righty, that kind of thing. Yeah, what, what happened was um, when the situation okay. Davis got on base, and uh, he has lightning speed, so he was on his own. He was trying to steal as many bases as possible. Well, David told me, he goes, just let Eric go. Get your batters out. And so that was our job from there on. Roger and I, you know, switching in and out. It was, uh, it was amazing. You know, Jay, I think, I think he, he played matchups a lot. Um, and probably if nobody was on base and, uh, you know, Jesse had two outs and was going to face a right hand hitter, he, he let him face him and vice versa for me. Uh, but I think, uh, I mean, and it's pretty much how we, um, closed all year where we matched up, mm-hmm. Davey matched up, uh, the end of the game, um, based on, you know, who started the game and how their lineup fell. Um, but. Rather than game by game, he had to do it by hitter by hitter and inning by inning. And so that's where, you know, you had the kind of the, the merry-go-round, the carousel of Jesse and myself going from, you know, pitcher to catcher or, excuse me, pitcher to right field and left field. Uh, and, and the thing is, is, and then maybe not a lot of people remember, in the batting order, Jesse and I batted back to back. I think we batted three right. and four. I think we batted three and four uh, in that game, and it came up to a situation later in the game, and um, it, it was it was pretty, like just said, it was pretty intense, but it was a lot of fun. Jesse, I don't know if you remember in the uh, in the fourteenth inning of the game, you actually walked before Howard Johnson hit a three run homer, so you were on base. You did it all that game. You pitched, you ran, and you played the outfield. You remember you were on base that time. Yeah, I did. Uh, you go walk, uh, which is something I don't do often. I do a lot of strikeouts. I knew that when I got to the plate, but that's the way the game was for me. But uh, that walk, I guess, helped out because well, Howard's right behind her was the next batter. Um, you know what? Refresh my memory, Jay, because I, I was right in front of Jesse. So did I strike out trying to move the runners over? I, I, I think you struck out. I don't know what you were trying to do. Yeah, I was trying to. I was trying to. They, they, they called it the, uh, the slash play. Yeah. And I never knew the signs, so I would always look down at Bud Harrelson out of Fort Myers. You know, if if the runners were going to go or not, or I'd look at the runners to see what I was supposed to do, and nobody moved. So I mean, I think I struck out, and then Jesse walked, and then Hojo hit the big home run. Guys, how hard was so who it? Who was me or Hojo? What's that? Yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> right. In '86, you know, we, we I think the key series at St. Louis, we swept the Cardinals in four games, and really nobody caught it. Caught it after that. How hard was it keeping up the the pressure all year long? We knew we were going to win the pennant, you know, and and, and really the team really hated us. You mentioned we had a lot of fights, a lot of you know stuff on the field. Like Mike Tyson came to visit, like like our team. How hard was it, you know? Playing when we're winning by so many games. Rob, you, you want to take it first? Or? Go ahead, Jess. Well, first of all, I mean, the most important thing through that, we were kind of running through everybody, was health. We had to make sure that everybody stayed healthy, uh, everybody's going forward. And we had such good depth, you know, with uh, pinch hitting, and we had two center fielders, two right fielders. Two third basemen, two shortstops, and so we had to make sure that everybody stayed healthy. If somebody got hurt, we still we're still confident that 
you know, you know, you have a we had a, a backup at one point. What do you think, Roy? We, you know, like, well, you know, you think about it. It's like Kevin Mitchell is our our, our fifth infielder and, and fourth outfielder. Okay, and, and fast forward a little bit. Now Kevin Mitchell goes and is on the verge of winning the Triple Crown uh, a few years later. Uh, Rick Aguilera was the swing guy on our pitching staff. He he pitched, uh, you know, if we needed a start, or he'd be a long guy. And then he goes up and he saves 300 games in Minnesota. I mean, we had a really good team. Uh, we had, like Jesse said, platoons at second base, uh, platoons in left field, and platoons at third base. And the thing was, you know, whether it was Howard and Ray at third or Tuff and, and Wally at second or any other platoons, it was like, you know what? This is about us collectively winning a baseball game and then going on and eventually winning the World Series, but that's what it was about. It, it, it was, there wasn't any individualism. I mean, we had we had co closers. Jesse and I were, were tandem closers, yeah. and yeah. I'm not sure what was Jeffrey, it, you 22, 22, 21, right? something like that. Yeah, you, know, you had, had 22 saves, Jesse had 21. And we you had, had 23, 23 plus saves save between us, and it, it was yeah. like, you know what? It, it doesn't matter. I mean, as far as work, we're con- we were concerned about winning a baseball game, and we did that on a, on a daily basis. That was our only concern, and however we got it done, we got it done, and we, Jesse, we had know, fun. We you, had you fun at the ballpark, and we had fun after after the game. You guys were the normal closers. Usually, the closer knows when he's coming in. Jesse, it was hard going. We go to the, to the bullpen. Is it Rogers' day or my day? It was hard to figure that out, or get used to what David was going to do. It was both our day because Davey had us gunned and ready to go all the time. I was, I've always told a lot of people about Roger where thanks to Roger, uh, I, he helped me break a record on 1,252 games. It takes, it takes a, a bullpen of guys to help each other out. If one guy tries to do the whole load, it gets a lot tougher. But, you know, Roger, he used to go for the ERA title when he threw so many innings this season. <laughs> but, uh, I, I thank him for that. I thank him for all my readers, but, um, to do it yourself, that's a, that's a big load, and Davey, Davey had something on his, in his mind right there, and he put it together, and so I think that's what really helped out right there, and uh, fortunate well, on that. Let's talk about another game. Um, game six in, in uh, Houston in the playoffs, we covered 16 innings, really, with four pitchers. It was Bobby O, Rick, Roger pitches five innings, you pitched three innings. Do you ever think that would happen today to the bullpen? You know, in 16 games and only four pitches would pitch? Probably be triple that. Do right, you want to take it first? Or? There, there wouldn't be enough pitches on the pitches staff. No, there, there wasn't. Um, <laughs> um, but, but, but again, the game has changed. and it, it, it changed from the 60s to when we played. And so it's just a progression and, you know, you deal with it. But, I mean, that's what we did at the time. We just pitched until we were told not to pitch and, or we quit getting people out. And so, you know, you know, to, to Jesse and your point before about, you know, how Davey um, went into a game or a series, uh, you know, there were always teams with uh, a higher left-handed uh, of hitters in the lineup, and those were usually Jesse team uh, or switch hitters. You know, those were Jesse's teams, and and I had the predominantly, you know, right-handed uh, hitting lineups. And so, but the thing was, is it it. it it, it depended on how the game progressed, how they pinch hit during the course of the game, who was up, and how the lineup was. But uh, you know, from the standpoint of going to the game six and you know, covering sixteen innings, I mean, that's just what we did. I mean, it was like we don't want to face Mike Scott tomorrow because um, he's already gotten into us uh, for two games. He eventually was the, uh, the MVP of the series, but. but it was. We want to. We want to end this tonight. And fortunately, we scored three runs off of Nepper and their bullpen in the ninth. And then uh, you know what? The rest of it was on just fumes. And I know Jesse was on fumes because he'd already pitched uh, multiple games in that series. And now he's being asked to pitch multiple innings uh, to save us in Game Six. And so you know, it was uh, like I said. Until you stop getting them out, um, you're out there. Jesse, let me ask you, uh, probably the most famous uh, mound meeting in the history of mound meeting. Um, we're in the 16th inning, 
They had uh, first and second, the runners were on base, and Gary and Kid came out to talk to you. You know what exactly? I heard different variations of what was said to you at that time. I think there's so many stories on that. Uh, I know when that situation came um, and they came out to the mound, they're, they're, they're kind of looking at each other, Keith and Gary. I just kept floating around. I said, I'm trying to get where I want to get and keep my thoughts together. So I didn't see a lot going on. You know, everybody asked me this question about, you know, and so I, said, I was kind of worried about, you know, what I had to do right now at like that time. It was a pretty tight spot. We can do the right thing, Jess. You couldn't hear yourself think, Jess, right? You couldn't yeah, I was hear yourself think. Yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, it, it, you were out there on the mountain, and then you got, I mean, the Astrodome, and you got 55,000 plus people, and they're screaming. I mean, it's, 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 it's their, their last hope. And it was like, you know what? I can't even, you can't even hear yourself think. And I, I know what Jess is talking about. Right. You, know, you, you try and keep that, that mindset that, you know what? I have a job to do, and I'll be there and I'll listen, but I don't hear you, you know? And so it's, it's, right, kind, of, yeah. it's kind of like, you know, the racehorse with the blinders. You keep the blinders on because you still have that uh, that job to do. Okay, let me ask you a couple of card questions. Uh, being a relief pitcher, what do you think about the extra inning rule when the guy goes to second base and in the, in the, nobody out? And and the other thing, what, what's your feelings about what MLB is trying to do this year about checking pitches during a game for substances? Who ever wants to start first? Jail? Uh, yeah. Well, first of all, I, I think, you know, they're, they're trying to continue the process to uh, keep the game getting faster. Uh, I, like the National League is always, is always the, the quickest uh, game's over and American League after that. But uh, I think that's uh, one, of the, one of the things they're trying to do is to, to keep the game moving fast. Um, what are you going to do? These, you know, these are, these are high-paid baseball players. You can't tell them that, you know, Hurry up to get the box. You know they 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 they're going out for every they can to be the best they can as ball player. So that's kind of a hard thing to do. Um, but as far as uh, at second base, I'm not trying to be mean. Uh, hopefully, no one else here. But I'm that's softball. And I remember my kids were playing softball in here, and if uh, if they got to a tie game. Basically, whoever scores first wins the game. So it's yeah. There's no more left-handed specialists anymore. I mean, um, um, you know, and and the thing is, is, is Jesse, at especially toward the end, was considered okay left-handed specialist. But there wasn't a right-hander that wanted to hit off him either. Um, but I think that was the I think that was the, the way the game uh, tried to um, put people in. Uh, so-called uh, uh, identity. Good question, guys. You know, 35 years of this winning championship, what do you remember? Why do you think the team, the Mets 86 team, was able to win 16 games and come back the way he did on numerous Whoever wants to start this. Um, I'll go ahead. Um, we, uh, we had some trialing seasons before that. Yeah. In uh, '84, '85, and we learned a lot out, of, a lot out of it. Uh, you know, to to get beat out a couple times in playoffs and and, and have to go back home, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of sour. But we knew that we had a good team. Uh, we knew that something was going to break through at some point, and you know, gladly it did. But honestly, I thought I thought we could have probably maybe had maybe a next year, one or two. Uh, series, you know, through that, that era, but we did have a great team, and definitely, I mean, Roger and I will say that we're proud of this team we had, and would never trade them. Yeah, it was pretty cool. You know, it was it was cool because uh, I guess it was said before. You know, you had you had a uh, a collective team of individuals that weren't individuals that that wanted to uh, do one thing, and that was win a baseball game. Um, you know, our leader, uh, uh, for me was Keith at first base and everything pretty much, um, revolved about around, uh, the way he presented 
the game to us, uh, especially me being in my second year. Obviously, Jess was a little older, and there were older guys, but there was I thought there was a really, really good mix of, uh, of veteran guys, um, of young guys, um, and, and uh, obviously really, really good baseball players. And so, you know, when you had you know, the, two, the two guys that uh, were drafted, um, I think, in the early 80s, right? Straw and Doc were drafted in right. 80, 81, mm-hmm. 80, 81, 82, something like that. And now they're, you know, now they're, they're stars on a, a championship uh, caliber baseball club um, in less than five years. And so, uh, and then you add the all-star uh, behind the plate that we got uh, after the 85, was it 84 season? The right. winner of 84 and 85. And then you had the veteran leadership of, of Ray Knight, uh, you know, the tenacity of Lenny Dykstra and Wally Backman, the, the, the consistency, Mookie Wilson, the, you know, consistency of Rafael Santana. i tell you what, that, that, that's an underrated uh, shortstop right there is, is Rafael Santana because he didn't make a, a ton of super highlight real film plays, but he made every routine play. And <laughs> when the ball was hit to him and he got a glove on it, you knew that runner was out. And, you know, for him also to hit eighth, he, he had you know, a lot of pitchers, uh, opposing pitchers kind of relaxed a little bit. And Rafi took care of a lot of uh, – game winners uh, with his own ability to hit. So, I mean, you know, it, it was just a, a bunch of guys that were really good athletes, really good baseball players that collectively came together. And, and uh, you know, the year was uh, it's identifiable for us because you know, we're down to our last out, um, last strike, with down two runs in game six of the World Series and somehow pulled that one out. And so it was uh, – I don't want to say a team of destiny, but there were a lot of things that pointed to uh, us winning that World Series when you look back over this, the course of the season. Hey, gentlemen, I appreciate your time, Roger, Jesse, and wish you all the best in closing. I just want to say one thing. On behalf of all the 86 Mets family, just want to extend our prayers to Howard Johnson and his family and his son, Glenn, and his wife, Kim, uh, on behalf of the accident befall his grandson, Tanner. We wish him all the best, Howard. We're all thinking of you. And... Again, guys, thank you for coming on, Jesse, Roger, and it's a pleasure. I hope to see you soon. Hey, Jay. Hey, uh, uh, Jay. Yes, sir. And, and there is a Go, GoFundMe page for Tanner, right? There is a GoFundMe page, yes. There is a GoFundMe page. And uh, you know, this is a family that's been devastated by this, uh, this, this happening. Um, unfortunate accident. And uh, you know, they, need, they need some help. So GoFundMe, Tanner Johnson. Yeah. Send our prayers to every Roger. Jesse, thank you for your time.